Good evening, Mr. Pate, teachers, parents, guardians, and most importantly, our year six students. Thank you for attending this important evening that we've prepared for you to help you get ready for 2021. My name is Mr. Malone and I'm the assistant principal. I'll be our MC for this evening. We'll begin with our acknowledgement of country and then our prayer. In the spirit of reconciliation, we gather here today. We would like to acknowledge the traditional caretakers of the land, the Darug people. We'd like to pay our respects to the Aboriginal elders, past, present and emerging they hold the traditions, the memories and wisdom of Mother Earth on which we place our feet upon today. Could you please join me in making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we dedicate this new day to you. As we go about our work, we ask you to bless those with whom we come in contact. Teach us to be generous. Teach us to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, so that like St Francis Xavier, we are fulfilling your will. Amen. St Francis Xavier, St Ignatius Loyola, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This evening I'd like to introduce you to members of the college leadership team who you'll be meeting in person here this evening and there are some other faces that you need to know as well. First of all, you'll hear tonight from Mr. Michael Pate, our college principal. And as I've said, my name is Mr. Malone. I'm the assistant principal. Mrs. Christine Bainbridge is a director of mission and formation. Mrs. Alexi Hawkins is the director of learning and pedagogy, and you'll hear from her shortly. Mr. Lee McCrory is a director of student growth and wellbeing. Mr. Andrew Watson is a director of e-learning and innovation. Mr. Daniel Wiley is the Director of Sport and Wellbeing. Mrs. Sheree Fennick is the Leader of Learning for Diversity. Ms. Bridget Mazzella is the Inquiry Learning Team Leader. Mrs. Teresa Hedrick is the Principal's Assistant and Mrs. Gina Vella is our Business Manager. Together, we make up the College Leadership Team and we support your children's learning here at school every day. I'd now like to introduce the College Principal, Mr. Pate. Thank you, Mr. Malone. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening. And I know this is an awkward time to gather. We normally would gather at our school. However, with, with COVID-19 restrictions and what's happening in our world, it's very, very difficult for us to meet as a, as a whole group. And uh, we need to bear, bear thoughts, I think, for people in South Australia at the moment who are today experiencing the beginning of six days lockdown. And uh, I guess that for each and every one of us, we our Christmas holidays are in a bit of turmoil at the moment, not knowing what's going to happen. So let's move forward. Let's actually pray for people and pray for our community uh, that we can actually move through this rather difficult time. What I'd like to talk to you today is about the fact that you've chosen to enrol your son and daughter at Xavier College. And in doing so, you've had them enrolled here from year seven right through to year 12. So there's no ongoing enrolment, uh, moving from year 10 to year 11, it's straightforward. So we're happy to work with you and your family over the next six years to provide good quality learning for your, for your son or your daughter. This journey begins next year in 2021 and concludes in 2026. For many of us, 2026 seems a, a long, long way away. The time goes very, very quickly. If you can think back at the time when you first started primary school with your children, way back in, in kindergarten, now they're moving into secondary school. So the next six years will go fast, but we're inter determined to work with you, to walk with you, to improve the learning for your sons and daughters. What can you expect from us? There are a variety of things that you can expect from us. To name just a few, particularly about strong traditional values and high expectations of all our students. We really value that and we set high expectations. Our mantra is to exceed your expectations. We want to nurture faith and that the faith can be expressed in a variety of ways. And in nurturing faith, we're not talking just about the Catholic faith. We're talking about other traditions. We're talking about sharing that wonderful journey that we can together. The Catholic Church is open to all religions and it's important for us to, to share and to understand and to learn from each other. We're a place where relationships are respected and they are authentic. And in doing so, we hold kids accountable at all points, but it's incredibly important that we respect each other through our deeds and through our actions. 
we have high expectations about learning, that learning is fundamental to all that we do at Xavier. Xavier is about learning, it's about growing, it's about consolidating what we already know and learning the unknown. It's a place we can support each other. We have an environment where our policies are designed to support you and to support your children and very much so that all students are able to learn and to grow. We like to celebrate our gifts and talents so we have an award structure. We have uh, various activities that students can be involved in that we can celebrate their gifts and talents being on the sporting field, academic or culturally. And ultimately the driving force of, of any Catholic school, in particular our school, is where the dignity of every, every person is respected. We need to be the best possible human we can be. And St Ignatius of Loyola had this very simple motto that we need to be the best possible human. And that applies to our staff, to our students, to our families and to the wider community. What's really important about our, our, our college is that the way that we relate to one another. And it's important that we respect each other, as I said earlier. And in doing so, we have very high expectations regarding behaviour, bullying, learning preparation, our diaries and our uniform. Those are the fundamental things that set us apart from schools in our local area. We are the highest performing school in our local area, and I appreciate the fact that you've chosen us for a variety of reasons, and we won't let you down on that. We do have high expectations about behaviour, about bullying, about our diaries, about our learning preparation, and just that on bullying, and I'll talk very, very briefly about that. We have a, a three strike policy. The first time someone bullies, it's a three day suspension. The second time it's five days and the third time we need to talk very seriously about is this the right place for that child we need to support both the victim and the perpetrator through procedural fairness and through counseling but it's a place where we will not accept bullying cyber bullying verbal bullying physical bullying if there is any indication of cyberbullying, our first course is to the police and we have no problems in reporting at that and working very closely with agencies to ensure that this does not happen. We wanna make sure that learning happens both inside and outside the classroom, that everything that we do is about learning and it's about respecting one another because every student has the right to learn and that learning will never be compromised in any circumstances. We run behavioural surveys throughout the year to ensure that students are focused on their learning and that we can give you feedback as parents about the learning that's taking place. You've chosen Xavier because you want your child to learn and our obligation to you is to ensure that they do learn and we get rid of any distractions there that prevent students from learning. To be successful, every student must have literacy skills. Every student must be able to read and to write. Every student must be able to count and in doing so, we have a very specific program designed to build the literacy of all our students. And Mrs. Hawkins will talk to that in a moment. There have been numerous studies done over the past several years. And one of the most recent studies was about um, taken by the Australian Council of Educational Research. And their finding was very simple. If you get the literacy right in year nine, then we will have a good idea of what, the, what they will be like in year 12. That is, we consolidate literacy, we consolidate numeracy in year nine, then we can guarantee that your son and daughter will have a successful HSC, a successful ATAR pattern of study in year 12. Now, if they don't meet those standards in year nine, we work uh, holistically with you and with your student to improve those results. And again, Mrs. Hawkins will talk to that. Our literacy plan has been implemented across our whole school. All faculties are involved in, in, in developing that process and making sure that we are working very clearly to ensure that your sons and daughters' skills in literacy are number one. And sometimes parents find that very, very difficult to actually help their children with literacy skills. Our staff here are, desire, are, are working here all the time to help you and to help your son and daughter improve right across that world. I'm going to talk to Mrs. Hawkins, I'm going to introduce Mrs. Hawkins to you in a moment, and she'll take you through a journey of learning. But before I do, I'd like to say one thing again. Thank you so much for choosing Xavier. We do appreciate the fact that we've had to do this via online tonight. Tomorrow, or Friday rather, uh, was going to be our orientation day for Year 7 students. We have 225 students coming from 30 different schools. For us, that was a rather difficult thing to manage. 
in order to make it safe for both yourself and for your children, and even thinking beyond that uh, about their grandparents and aunts and uncles, we decided that we would run our orientation day in a different process. We know that students would meet on the 20th of November and they wouldn't meet again until the 28th of January. And that two month period is a long period of time for students to develop anxiety. So we're going to run a two week orientation program when they start with us next year. And Mr. Malone will talk more to that. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for choosing our school. At the end of the presentation, we'll be able to answer some questions for you. I'd now like to hand over to Mrs. Hawkins. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good evening, um, parents and guardians and 2021 Year 7 students. It's wonderful to be with you and to commence our journey of partnership in secondary education. I will continue the discussion um, regarding literacy. It is so very important and it's a focus for our college. And in Year 7 and 8, all faculties are fo focusing on our literacy plan. And in classes, in every subject, students will be explicitly taught as well as being given feedback and feed forward on sentence structure, paragraph structure, the use um, of subject specific terminology um, and text types, narrative and persuasive text. Students in year eight and then in year nine also have literacy classes. And so in 2021, year eight students and year nine students will have three classes over a fortnight. There are hundred minute lessons where we actually look and examine um, text features. We look at text types. Um, and we also focus on skill development, like spelling, reading, um, vocabulary as well. Um, and so that, that focus on literacy not only occurs in year seven, but continues um, into year eight and year nine. Further to that, next year, year seven, we'll have an opportunity um, to also be involved in our before and after literacy intervention classes, where students are able to actually get individual assistance um, and on their learning preparation or assessment tasks that are coming up. Um, for those students who are invited to that, a letter will be home, was sent home early next year um, and your son or daughter can partake in those lessons and choose an afternoon or a morning that they wish to attend. Further to that, um, our data always informs our practice here at the college. And so in year seven, eight and nine and 10, there is a number of testing um, devices that we use, but particularly next year for your sons and daughters, they are going to do PAT reading. They will also do PAT vocab as well as e-write. And we use that data. They will do that at the beginning and the end of the year uh, to examine the growth of the students um, and also to inform what we actually focus on in literacy classes and in other faculties uh, for the years after. Next year in 2021, uh, we have three lessons per day uh, and they are 100 minute lessons. And your sons and daughters and the year seven students will have a range of courses that they do. And there are a number of very exciting um, courses. They'll do religious education, English, math, science, technology, visual arts, music, PDHPE, history and geography, which is semesterized. So they'll do history in semester one, which is terms one and two and geography in semester two, terms three and four. And the language that they will be learning is Korean. We are a BYOD college. And so all students are required to have their device with them every day for learning and for many other things like research and, and they will use it to create and present, etc. So we use it all the time for our learning. Um, so a great idea if Santa would like to um, support your child's learning, but there will be further information about um, this, the technology that is um, required for next year. Um, and that information is going to be posted out to each family at the end of November. In 2021, uh, Year 7 students would become very familiar with Xavier Inquiry Learning. We call it XIL, which is project-based learning at the college. And the students will actually start the year doing XIL, but also they'll have opportunities in every subject to do an XIL project or sometimes numerous projects in particular subjects. And I suppose for parents and guardians, this is a familiar site in a classroom. Uh, one that you can see, uh, you probably went to high school and this is probably what it looked like. But the world that we are getting them prepared for is not the one that we have known in the past. And so we want our students to be graduate, graduate ready. Um, and the, the research actually suggests that students will have up to 17 possible jobs when they graduate. So we do have to get them ready. And we do this by looking at um, key skills that they need to actually uh, develop 
to have those 17 possible jobs and to be successful in them. So through the XIL projects, I will be working um, and developing those skills. So we understand that through the XIL, we want student voice and for students to have choice about their projects and have an authentic connection to the, the wider community. We also ensure that they have the ability to transfer their skills into different learning and making sure that they understand what those skills are and to use them when required. We also know that XIL enhances our metacog the metacognition of our students to enable them to focus on strategies to improve their learning. So the year seven, 2021, my Xavier Learning, it's an immersion project that'll be running for the first two weeks of 2021 for year seven. It actually allows our new year seven students to immerse themselves in the XIL learning environment and to focus and learn about those key enterprise skills. So it actually allows for our students to build new relationships and also to transition into high school confidently. The program will be placed onto school bag and all our media platforms in week nine of this term. And so as parents and guardians and future year seven students, you can go through that and read through that information. And this will ensure all our year seven learners and parents and guardians are familiar with what will be happening early next year. And I am now going to pass on to Mr. Malone, he'll take over. Thank you, Mrs. Hawkins. At Xavier, we have a house-based system. And this is one of the things that we have to support the well-being of your child here at school. The six houses are around the sides of the screen here. And each house has a combination of students from year seven all the way through to year 12. The Dean of House that works with each house will be there to meet with students. They're their point of contact if they have any concerns or questions here at school. And it's a consistent person that the family can liaise with throughout the six year journey. In Campion, the Dean of House is Mr. Tasalis. In Faber, the Dean of House is Mrs. Douglas. In Loyola, the Dean of House is Mr. Varga. In McKillop, the Dean of House is Mrs. McCrory. In McCormack, the Dean of House is Miss Lee. And in Tennyson, the Dean of House is Miss Walsh. Each year seven student will be a part of a tutor group within that house. So students that are in the Campion house will be in one of three Campion tutor groups. And what that means is they'll have a combination of students that they may know from their primary school in that tutor group with them, but there'll be many new year seven students that they don't know yet, and they'll get to know them throughout the course of next year. Inside that uh, tutor group, they will also have students from year eight. The year eight peer support leaders will also be in that tutor group with your child. So they won't just be meeting their peer support buddy one off on, on sporadic occasions, but they will have regular contact with them. In fact, the first port of call each day is with the tutor group. We start each day with tutor group in the morning. So students get to know their tutor group teacher, and that person is the first contact with the college and they'll also meet the rest of their tutor group students. On their first day back, they will also have a barbecue and we also have a meet and greet barbecue where all family members will get to meet that tutor teacher. So we have an opportunity to come up to the college to meet that tutor face to face and you get to see who the other students are in that tutor group. You also receive regular phone calls from your tutor throughout the year. And that is an opportunity for them to pass on what's working well and to find out as well if there's anything we need to know about to further support your child here at school. Next year, we've organised a year of orientation. So whilst orientation day won't occur this Friday, we have organised a whole year of events to help students get ready for high school learning. The first day for students is Thursday the 28th of January and that's a year seven only day. Students, you're gonna have the run of the school. You're gonna have a chance to explore, to get to know where everything is, to get to know some of the teachers you'll be working with and familiarize yourself with the Xavier College site. We'll also have a barbecue for you on that first day. It's a great chance to come together and share a meal. On Friday the 29th of January, which would be your second day of school, it'll be the rest of the school's first day at school. We have a welcome to the college community planned just for year seven, where you'll be welcomed into the school. 
We also have our academic award ceremony occurring on the same day. Throughout this first week, you'll also get to know your tutor group and your tutor group teacher. Our peer support program, as I've said, goes right through the school year and it will, will commence on day one on Thursday, the 28th of January. So that will be a day where you'll get to meet your peer support buddy and they'll be also with you in your tutor groups each morning. We then also have weekly programs, a program that runs throughout term one with follow-up meetings all the way through term through, through to term four. We have a specific orientation program, an immersion program, which Mrs. Hawkins and Mr. Pate have described already. And this runs for the duration of the first two weeks of school. It's a tailor-made program built to make sure that your students know what high school life is like and to set them off on their high school learning journey. The orientation camp will occur in term four as the weather starts to get warmer again. And it is set for Monday the 22nd through to Wednesday the 24th of November 2021. So it's a chance to put that on your calendars at home. Permission notes around each of our events come out well over a month in advance as well. There'll be a number of ways you can communicate with teachers here at school. One thing that you'll see next year is students will come home on day one with their learning planner or their diary. This is used to communicate with parents, but it's also used for parents to communicate with teachers. If a, a note is being returned saying a student is, uh, has an injury and they're not able to participate in a particular subject, you might put that down if they had say sport or PDHPE that day, or if there are any issues around work that was being completed at home and if your child was unable to complete something that was set for them uh, to work on at home for their learning preparation then you'll be able to put down what that issue was and the teacher then knows to check in with your child to, to see where that um, problem occurred. In term one and term three your tutor will make a phone call just to check in with families. It's just to see what's, what's going well for you, what's going well for us, what we're seeing with your child here at school. And you can also then let us know if there are any other issues or things that have come up that we need to know about. Parent teacher student conferences occur throughout the year. And this is a chance for us, whether they're on Zoom or face to face, to have a conference about your child's learning in each subject. Academic reports go out in semester one and semester two and contain feedback about their academic progress and their attention to learning and application in class. You notice at the bottom of the screen here, we've got some reminders there about Facebook and school bag. And one of the other communication tools that we use is social media. You'll be able to follow all updates, any information through our Facebook page and through our school bag page. Our public Facebook page, you can jump on and like now. And then once next year arrives and your students become enrolled at the school, you can then be a part of the Xavier College Landilo Parent Council page. And that is a closed page with just parents from our school community. We also put information out there and you can ask questions as well. And we'll provide links to that later on tonight. Let's have a look at our college uniform now. And you can see some students here. They were on the left here, part of our immersion program early this year. And the students on the right there um, were using our sanitizers in the classrooms, making sure they are their hands are clean and hygienic and ready for learning. The students here are wearing their summer uniform. You'll notice that they have the college shirt or blouse on. It has the college crest on there. It's clean and ironed. For boys in summer, they have a choice of wearing the shorts, the Xavier College shorts or the Xavier College trousers. These students here have chosen to wear the shorts. The trousers um, are worn in term two and three for all male students, but in term one and four students have the option of wearing those. The students here have polished clean black leather shoes and their socks are above the ankle. For the boys, that's gray socks and for girls, that's white socks. The girls pictured here have the college kilt that is um, worn with a pin. Next year, that will be a skirt, so the pin won't be required. And our female students will also have the opportunity to wear the college dress should they wish. Let's have a look at the winter uniform. Now, the winter uniform has a blazer and students in year 7, 8, 9 and 10 will have the blazer that has the red piping around the collar, which you can see there, and also down on the cuff.
So the blazer that you would buy for your child is the one that has the red piping. So be very careful if you're buying one of the secondhand uniforms. All students from seven through to 10 have to have the one with the red piping and that's being transitioned through the school. You'll notice that the student on the left at the front there has a jumper on and in summer and winter students, male students can wear the black woolen pullover and female students can wear the red woolen pullover. The blazer is, the, is what students wear to and from school in the winter months and male students have a tie. If they're in seven to nine, they have the junior tie and if they're in years 10 to 12, it's a senior tie. You'll notice with the female students on the right, they are also wearing stockings and stockings are worn by students, in, by female students in terms two and three. Let's have a look at the sport uniform now. And we've got a mix of the tracksuit and the t-shirt being worn here. All students, whether they're male or female, have the college polo shirt and the Xavier College shorts. Students have the choice of wearing in some of the tracksuit that goes with that. We don't wear the college pullover woolen jumper in on our sports days or for our sport lessons. It's the Xavier College sports tracksuit that is worn. And in winter months, that is definitely worn by all students, particularly on those cold mornings. Some students choose to bring their shorts underneath their tracksuit pants or get changed into their shorts for their PDHPE lessons if they wish. But they are both with the shorts and the tracksuit pants have the Xavier College logo on those. You'll notice here as well that students are wearing runners or joggers for their shoes. It's really important for WHS reasons that students have supportive and strong footwear. So street shoes like canvas shoes and street shoes they might be wearing when they um, jump on a skateboard aren't the style of shoes that they can wear in their PE or sport lessons. And the PE teachers will remind them about those next year. And we've got all of these details on our school website with pictures of the appropriate shoes as well. College uniform is worn correctly at all times. We follow up with students if it's not, parents go to great expense to purchase that. And by wearing the college uniform, students know what they're getting ready for each day. We check regularly. Every single morning we check uniform. On Monday morning we have a school assembly and we check that together. And we also have our regular check-ins at every lesson to make sure the uniform's being worn correctly at all times. Please avoid the latest trends. Things like nose piercings, if, they, if, if your child has one of those, the nose piercing has to come out before they start school. So if students choose to get one over that Christmas period, please make sure that it is done well and truly before Christmas, because often they need four to six weeks before they can come out and they need to be out before they return to school. With ear piercings, and this is all on the college website as well for the uniform policy, it is one earring in each ear. We have a lot of policies here to support your child in their learning. And Mr. Pate's already described our anti-bullying policy. Our hands-off policy, make sure that students are safe at all times. We have to respect each other and make sure that we respect their body. We don't lay our hands on any other student at any time and we don't condone violence. We have a student management policy that we work with students on to make sure that they are applying themselves as best they can in every lesson to get the most out of it. Our student award scheme provides students the opportunity to get merits at any given time on any given day for the great work that they are doing. And we celebrate and acknowledge that through our college assemblies and at the end of the year for major awards. We have sport and cultural awards and these are at three different tiers. We have blue, red and white sport and cultural awards. And again, we present these for students for the work they're doing in either sport or cultural activities. We then also have our academic awards, and this is for academic achievement across the college in any given subject in any year group. And these are again at a three tier level, gold, silver, and bronze. We'll also be surveying students regularly throughout the, their school year. They will do the TTFM survey, and you may be familiar with that from the primary school that you've been in this year. We also have surveys that we run here at school to make sure that the learning environment in every lesson in every class is ready for your child, that we have the right conditions for them to learn. We um, survey students and staff on this and sometimes there'll be specific groups that we'll survey. It might be about a particular bus, it might be about sporting groups and we just wanna get student feedback as often as possible. The successful school journey is really um, 
contingent upon one thing, and that's being here at school. The single and simplest, most valuable action you can make that promotes a, this successful journey is ensuring that they come to school. If they're sick, they need to be home. And we've certainly learned a lot this year about when people are sick or displaying flu-like symptoms or any sickness, they need to be home to recover. But as soon as they are ready again, we need them back here every minute of every day, making sure they're here on time and ready to go so there's no gaps in their learning. Without being at school, no other factor can make a difference. If there is a problem in getting them to school, uh, please work with us to solve it. And we have the tutor group teacher, the Dean of House, uh, and the attendance liaison officer, Mr. Glenn Trefoni, who can work with you with that. Attendance is really important because we know that research shows us the impact of absenteeism is one of the biggest factors in a student's school outcomes. We have a slogan across all of our CED, CEDP schools and we want every learner here every day. We do miss them when they're not here. We will be in touch if they are away uh, regularly and consistently just to check in and make sure everything is okay. Now's the time for Q&A. So in the section beneath this presentation, you'll see a chat box. Please post any questions and we'll be online here available to answer those. And uh, any that anyone that isn't able to make this uh, evening tonight will also get a copy of our frequently asked questions from tonight and we'll broad that, broadcast that to everybody tomorrow as well.